Hey, this is Sarah again. Welcome back to another episode of Eat with Sarah. I am in Belgrade again. We're going to explore Kalmegdan Park, where I am right now. We're going to eat at a vegetarian restaurant that has a ton of vegan options. And then I'm gonna tell you about some other things to do in the area. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Eat with Sarah. Not far from where we're having lunch is Question Mark. It's a notorious bar and cafe in Serbia. They're not notorious for being vegan friendly, they're just notorious for the name. It's a spot that the locals favorite and the tourists favorite as well because of its infamous name. It's an interesting site to check out if you are going to enjoy lunch or a snack or dinner or drinks at the lunch location. For simplicity's sake and to avoid butchering the name while in Serbian, we'll just call it Rados Fina. It's not a stereotypical restaurant. It, it doesn't really have much signage outside, so that is something to be mindful of. I'm just going to be looking over the menu for a bit. And looking over the menu, um, we have yeah, a decent amount of options. So they do have a mezzi for one though. And then for main courses, they have everything from vegan burgers and homemade buns. I remember I had that last time. I was here. Um, ramen, tortilla mexicana, arroz salad, bolognese quesadilla. Interesting. I ordered the ramen radosh. Um, named after Rattles. And that is Japanese soup with rice slash wheat noodles. I don't know, he didn't explain if I had a choice of what type of noodles I got or if they're a combination type of noodle with grilled vegetables, shiitake mushrooms, and marinated tofu. I did get the mezzi for one. I did not get it with the buckwheat pancake gluten-free option. It comes with hummus, mahara, baba ganoush, tofu, paprika, and kamada olives served with pita bread. So the ramen is available vegan. The entire restaurant is not vegan, but a lot of the things are vegan. All of the starters are vegan. Main courses, vegan burgers, um, ramen is. The tortilla mexicana it seems like it can be made vegan. Uh, the radish to salad, not sure about the bolognese because like he said the bolognese quesadilla but then it doesn't have a vegan option by it. The most frustrating and confusing thing is that I wanted the Rados lasagna and he said that that's not vegan. Maybe that's because they don't have the vegan option available right now, I don't know. The menu may not 100% be accurate. They don't have any vegan wines, liquors, brandies specified, but it may or may not be vegan. They do have squeeze juices is what they call them, orange, ginger, lemon, mint. As far as the sweets go, most of them are vegan. They have a raw vegan option, which is great. They have gluten-free options, which is great. They have two options, which are not vegan. That's Papa's Cake, which I think is something local. And then they have Pumpkin Cheesecake Delight. I was served my mezzi platter. I was not, um, I'm not sure about what all of these are. This probably is the Baba Noosh, just because of the color. I think this might be the paprika tofu. This looks like the hummus, I think. And then I think this is the mohara. Let's give a taste to the baba ganoush. So the, with the baba ganoush, it's pretty thick baba ganoush. The, the flavor of the tahini comes through really strong. Not so much the flavor of the eggplant. When I normally make my baba ganoush, it's more eggplant heavy and they seem to be more heavy on the tahini. Now the bread is, is room temperature. Um, has a layer of probably like sumac or something on it with the sesame seeds, a little bit of oil. Here, I think this is the paprika tofu, I'm not sure. Try it with another piece of pita bread. It's an interesting combination of flavors, like 
I think it uh, might actually be bell pepper and tofu because just the way the flavors combine is more of a bell pepper, like a fresher tasting rather than the spiced paprika. There's a, there's a distinct flavor that I can't put my finger on, but it's an interesting combination and I, yeah, I like it. Here we have the third dip. Here it is. They're all pretty thick dips, which I do like. I think this is the mojara. This one's interesting. This one's a little bit sweeter. Yeah, I think I taste the walnuts coming through. I have that mouthfeel, the flavor of the walnuts. Yeah, I really like this. It's sweeter. It's mm. and then it has nice fresh cilantro flavor. It's a really balanced combination of herbs and spices. I like that it's not completely smooth, which provides a little bit of differentiation between the dips. The baba ganoush being a little bit more creamy. That tahini flavor really is prominent, and then the bell pepper flavor was really prominent with the tofu with this one it's on the sweeter side which i didn't expect because i do think i've had this before at other restaurants but i actually i really like this i'm a really big fan of that and last but not least is the hummus i'll take a taste without the bread first yeah chickpea flavor really comes through with this. I don't remember it saying that the hummus was like spice, but I can taste the spices of the of the hummus. It's definitely not just like pure hummus with the with the tahini and the chickpeas and the lemon juice. Yeah, I think this has a little bit of chili pepper in it. It's a good flavored hummus. I think the flavor is good. The one area in which I think it could be improved would be the texture, like hummus for me, like normally it's a bit creamier, like this is on the thick side, and it's also like not as smooth as what I would expect. I like how this one was given a bigger portion, this one allows me to use it on two pieces of bread. It was a nice variety of dips, I would say my favorite was the muhara dip, I, I loved that sweetness, loved that. And then like the walnut, I could like taste the, the walnuts a little bit, but it wasn't overpowering. My least favorite was the chickpea hummus, I think. It's because I expect hummus to be a lot creamier, a little bit more acidity to pop out. I think that was lacking. And then with the pita bread we have here, I do like that they included the spices on top of it because I have bread left. The portion sizes for the dips compared to the ratio of the bread could be adjusted to allow for more dip on the bread. And then the bread, I love for it to be an actual pita. They did call it a pita, but there's no pita pocket. And then the bread by itself is a little bit on the dry side. I have my ramen and it looks very appetizing. There's some fresh cilantro on top. The shiitake mushrooms are prominently displayed. The grilled tofu has some grill marks, was prominently displayed um, lots of broth, and looks like some of the veggies are julienne carrots, um, likely some onions, haven't heard the onions yet, and then we have some bell pepper. So let's give a taste to this ramen. I don't know where I should start. I guess I'll start with the noodles. So I get some noodles in here. It almost looks like the um, carrots have also been sliced very thinly to use as noodles. Herbs are really nice and fresh. Definitely tell that the noodles have absorbed some of the flavors. And the broth. It's a mushroom vegetable broth. You can definitely taste the umami in the broth. So let's get a taste of the mushroom. So we have this big mushroom that I can just dig into. What I think they got right about this is like drawing inspiration from Japan. I'm not one to want too much salt. To me, I don't think it's overly salty. So here we have some tofu. The flavor of the tofu itself, I don't know, it, it has a very nice flavor of the tofu. Like some tofus taste better than others. I like the flavor of the tofu. So as far as veggies go, I mainly see the carrots and the bell pepper. And then if you want to call cilantro a veggie. One of my favorite aspects of this is that they did make the carrot like noodles. I think that was unexpected. They didn't really have like carrot noodles 
on the menu, but I think that's a really nice touch and it makes the eating experience a lot better. The bell pepper has been sliced really thinly, quite thinly and um, long too, to be similar to a noodle. So like overall, they really paid attention to the eating experience. Deciding on sweets, well, I do think I'm gonna go with the flourless orange almond cake. So here we have the almond flourless orange cake and um, the presentation is really nice. It does look like there's a chocolate frosting on top, um, garnished with an orange slice, and I love the, the color inside of here. That's really nice as well. Kind of this like caramel color. Let's dig into that. So it's a pretty firm cake. I like the crunch that it has, so like I think you can see the texture. Okay, I don't think I've had another cake like this where it's like chewy. Not quite crunchy per se, the almond and the orange flavor really comes out like, you know, 100% promises to be an orange cake and it does not disappoint. And then the frosting on top is chocolate and the almond chocolate and the orange go really well together. The chocolate doesn't come through too much. I really like how the orange flavor is left to shine. I think this orange almond dessert would be great for sharing. It's a lot of orange flavor. There has to be some orange peel in here. I think it'd be good to have a bit of maybe like um, a complimentary flavor, um, like cinnamon or ginger, like it's just a little bit more to offset the orange flavor by a little bit more depth. So after Mail Arado Shfina, a really great destination to go afterwards is Kalamagdam Park and that's because it's a really short walk from where the restaurant is. If you're a visitor to uh, Belgrade, you definitely know Kalamagdam Park because it's iconic, it's right on the edge of the two rivers, the Danube and the Sava River. The Danube River goes throughout Europe. It's one of the longest rivers in Europe. It starts somewhere in Germany and goes all the way into the Black Sea. And one of the reasons why Kalamagdam Park is so iconic is because it's so big, it has a lot of history, it has a lot of things to do here. One of the best things is, is the walks, is the views. You get a great view of the river. You're above the level of the rivers. It's a beautiful place to come during sunset. Not only is it great for walking, there's a zoo, there's history, the, the fortress is here, a church, there is a playground for children, they have various events, they have the military museum, there's so much to do. Why not enjoy a plant-based meal at Rado's China and then come enjoy some time at Kalamagdam Park. Kalamagdam Park is also known for the Statue of the Victor, which we'll go see in a little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to come see it in person sometime. Because Serbia has been a very treacherous place. It's been a place that has been commonly fought over for thousands of years. It's highly desirable from everybody to the Austria-Hungary Empire to the Turkish Empire, to the Yugoslavia, and then what finally turned into Serbia, the country it is today. And the statue of the vector that we're going to go see, it has a hawk in one hand that is looking out for danger, and it has a sword in the other hand that is ready to defend itself against any further danger. Here is the statue of the victor popping through the trees, and we'll go get a better look. park is very unique. It's not just a bunch of pretty flowers and trees and grass. And because it's so expansive, that's one of the reasons why the locals come here too. It's, it's easily accessible, it has great views, but on the other hand, there's always something new to explore. It's constantly changing, it has a lot of 
things to do, things to see, interact with. I'm only giving a short overview of what this area of Belgrade brings, but you have a vegan and vegetarian restaurant you can enjoy, you have Calumacdown Park which has so much to explore, you have Question Mark which is iconic. This area offers so much and it's such a small area of Belgrade to be honest, but you could spend an entire day here and have it filled to the brim and not have seen everything. It's, you definitely have to check out this area of Belgrade. Thanks for watching this episode of you with Sarah. I'm so glad you went on this journey with me to Calumacdown Park and Radosh I'd really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel and let me know what you would have ordered at Radosh Fina. I'll see you next time. Bye.